How are you doing? It's April 2nd. It's my father's 99th birthday. He's not alive. He died in 2008 at the age of 83. But if he was alive, today would be his 99th birthday. So happy birthday, Dad, in heaven. Today has nothing to do with my father's birthday, by the way. I want to paint a shark there. Painted in watercolor. Of course, I used pencil to sketch it first. But I wanted to paint a shark. The reference photo is from a, a visit we made to the um, aquarium in St. Petersburg, I think, or Clearwater. But anyway, I've had a couple of questions asking me how to paint fish. So I thought I'd paint a shark. Why not paint the fish, of all fish? I'll show you how I did that right now. Okay, good morning. It's 6.09 a.m. Tuesday morning. It's April 2nd. Today would have been my father's 99th birthday. How about that, huh? Yeah, he's been gone since 2008. But I always remember his birthday. Anyway, which has nothing to do with the painting we're going to do today. What I want to do today is a shark. <laughs> yes, I live in Florida. And no, thank goodness, I've never seen a shark in the water. I've been swimming a lot in the beach, at the beach. <laughs> but I've never seen a shark, thank goodness. So I want to do a shark. Now, where did I see this shark? Well, that's an easy answer. This was in uh, an aquarium in St. Petersburg, I think. St. Petersburg or Clearwater. I can't remember if it was considered clear. I think it's St. Pete. But anyway, yeah, that's where we went. And we went to, to this big, big place underneath the... You go down the stairs... <clears throat> and there's a big piece of glass there. And, and, you, and you hope that the glass holds, you know. So, I think of the shape of this shark. I'm looking at it on my reference photo up on the monitor to my left. Yeah, so I was thinking about, I wanted to do an underwater picture. It's a, it's a pretty common um, question. How do you paint things to look like they're underwater. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What's the best answer? The best answer is truly, I think, to study what you see. I want to, I'm trying to decide if this shark has two fins here or, or one. Do sharks have two fins? Two dorsal fins? Let me look it up. Do sharks have two... Or, or am I looking at a shark in front of another shark? Hold on a second. Let me look it up. Hey, Siri. Mm -hmm. Do sharks have two dorsal fins? Most sharks feature two dorsal fins. That's what it says right there. Okay. Well, I didn't know. I had no idea. <clears throat> well, anyway, in the movies, all they show is that one. <laughs> they don't show two. Well, that's something I didn't know. See, I thought I was looking at in the in the reference photo. I know you can't see it, but I'll, I, maybe I, if I if I remember when I'm done videotaping, I'll try to put a B-roll in here with uh, that second dorsal fin. See, there's one, and they're not. It's like not like one is smaller than the other. They're the same size. Okay, and then this tail is flipping around a little bit over here. So you really can't see the whole tail. Looks like he's making a, he's using it to turn. So there's that. And then it looks like he's got another fin down here. It's a pretty cool animal, really. If 
you think about it. God has made some amazing creatures. I mean, there it's incredible what's out there. It's incredible. I mean, human beings are so stuck on human beings. We, we forget that it's not just us. We're not the only ones here. <laughs> not to get too philosophical. But. All right, let's see. There's the, the hump in his back, the lump, whatever. It's the curve on his back. It goes around here. It looks like it comes straight over this way. It comes up to the... The part you don't want to be near, which is the jaw, right? That movie Jaws made the jaw of a shark very well known. So there's that and that. And then over here, he's got this very long, thin. Very long fin right there. And that fin is right behind the gills. I'm assuming those are gills. There are lines right there. One, two, three, four, five, six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them. I'm basically sketching everything to make sure I get it right. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't just grab the watercolors and start this one. This one took a little bit of planning. I think that, that fin is back further. That fin looks like, resembles, I should say, a, a thorn on a rose bush. You see the shape of it? That's what it looks like to me. It's like a, I mean, a shark is just a big eating machine. Their whole job is to eat, I guess. <laughs> eat and reproduce, right? Eat and make more sharks. It's kind of an incredible... It's a whole incredible world. Everything underwater is incredible. So I have gone underwater, of course. Not, I'm not a scuba diver. But I have gone snorkeling. <laughs> Does that count? <clears throat> so there, from there to there, he's got a big long. I might have made his nose too sh too short, but I'm gonna take a little liberties with this guy. Goes down here. Yeah, there it goes. So that's how it looks there. His eye is right about there, and his eye is definitely a menacing-looking eye. And uh, his mouth is right, right there. Right there. I think the snout is a little bit longer. They say, now I don't ever want to try this, but they say if a shark comes up to you, punch it in the nose. Oh my gosh, I don't think so. Well, I guess if I had no choice, I'm either going to be dead or I'm going to be punching a shark in the nose. I think I'd rather punch a shark in the nose. But, wow. You know, I was in the water one time at the ocean, at Daytona Beach. And this was when my son was younger. And my son was out in just, you know, maybe 10, 20 feet, maybe 20 feet away from me. He was with Robin. He wasn't a little kid, he was like a teenager. And uh, a huge fish swam right next to me, right in their direction. I have no idea what it was, but it was gigantic. I, when I say gigantic, I don't mean like Jaws gigantic, like that fish, but oh, I would say at least as long as a human being, at least as big as a person. And it went swimming by me like a rocket. I mean, so fast. And it was heading in their direction. <clears throat> and of course, I was scared that it was heading toward them. And I called to them as if they could do something about it. But there would have been nothing they could do about it. 
and they never saw it they never felt it they never did anything it just it went past me and that was all there was to it thank goodness thank god yeah but anyway so i did see that one time and then when you go snorkeling you know you see these little fish i went snorkeling once in key west here's a little story for you i had a friend who uh was in the newspaper business in Key West. He worked for the Miami Herald. And they had a building in, uh, not in Key West, but in Marathon Key, which is about, if you go to the Florida Keys, it's about halfway, I know, I was in the wrong place. It's about halfway between the beginning of the Keys and Key West. Key, I think it's about a hundred miles, uh, from the beginning to to the keys to key west I'm trying to think where is this where is this eye right here anyway so he he worked in the newspaper business and because i'm an artist he asked me if i would come down and and paint the window on the front of the miami herald building which was just a small little office really and uh so I did. I went down there. And then I had to go back for something. I guess to touch it up or whatever. I can't remember what I had to do now. But I had to go back for something. And my son came with me. And at that time, I guess he was a teenager or whatever. And, um, oh, you know when it was? It was this. I, I can tell you the date. It was when John F. Kennedy Jr. died. <clears throat> Let me ask Siri. Hey, Siri. Uh-huh. What date did John F. Kennedy Jr. die? John F. Kennedy Jr. died July 16th, 1999 at age 38 in Martha's Vineyard. <clears throat> 1999. So my son would have been... Uh, 13 he would have been 13 years old so anyway so we went down there and um i keep getting that eye in the wrong spot i'm just not happy with where that eye is I, i'm happy with the shape but so far i haven't gotten the mouth see the mouth has all these teeth let me see what am i see one two three four. i see six teeth there just like the gill so let me do that let me just make six teeth one Two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> okay, I guess, I guess. I'm missing some in top, some teeth in the top too, coming down. Okay, so back to the story. So I was down in Marathon Key, painting, uh, finishing the painting, or whatever. I don't even remember what I was doing that particular day, uh, unless it was just... I was so enamored, if that's the word, about it, by the keys. But maybe I just wanted to show my son, because it was such a beautiful place. That could be what it was. So anyway, that's when it was. It was when John F. Kennedy Jr. died. Because I remember hearing the news. That's, that was my mark in time. Okay. I think I got the shark. Now I got to... Just remember where the shading goes. I can do that with the paint, but I just want to give myself a little reminder here. So anyway, um, this, this can be the top of the water. You can see you can see the underside of the water in this picture. So there we go. <sighs> there we go. That's my shark. So my friend, who works for the um, Miami Herald. Oh, not not anymore. He's retired, but he used to work for them. He he told us about this place, this beach that that he recommended we go to. And we went to this beach. I can't remember what it was called, but it was kind of like right after it had rained, and I think I think it was like a big rain. It wasn't just a little rain. It was a big rain. And uh, we went there, and we went swimming, we went uh, snorkeling, and 
there were barracudas little barracudas from what i understand they get way big but these were not way big but they were just as menacing looking as this shark as any shark and they were around us and we knew about them in advance people told us you might see barracudas and we were warned not to wear anything shiny anything silvery you know any jewelry or anything so of course we didn't and the, the barracudas just they were just beautiful and they were just there and they yes they were scary and uh, it was just a, a great memory for me and my son of course i was worried but nothing really happened they were just there and in that swim we also saw lots and lots i hundreds maybe thousands of little fish that swam all around us and also we saw a couple of blowfish you know those fish that they say when you touch them they'll pop out and, and become big like a big balloon so we saw them i don't really need to get that wet though i think i will oh well too late now i got it wet um and it was just such a beautiful thing because you know i go snorkeling in the river here in central florida i don't go snorkeling in the ocean to be honest with you if you snorkel here like in daytona it's not easy you can't see it's it's just cloudy the water's not that clear but the water down there was very clear and you could see all these fish and it was just so amazing to me to see all those fish let's see if i can get some blue green on here oh that's beautiful Oh, look at that color. Look at that. That's perfect for this. What is this one? I'm going to mix in some blue with blue green, but. Yeah. Make it a little blue green and blue. What is this one? Is this one green? So we saw all those fish. Well, here's the side story to that story. Oh, by the way. There was also another, there was, no, there was nobody at this beach, except for Alex and me. He was 13, as I just found out. I wasn't sure. And there was a lady there, and she had two boys, and they were swimming also. So they were swimming, and actually she was more knowledgeable about the water and about the fish than I was. I wasn't knowledgeable at all. But but she knew all that, all those little things, and... She told us some of the things that I had already heard not to not to have shiny stuff on, which we were already in the water, so it was kind of late at that point. But, um, so the, the, the rest of the story was we got back, and I was so excited to tell my friend, oh my gosh, we saw the barracudas, we saw blowfish, and we saw these lots of little fish. And the little fish got me scared because I thought, well, we were, we were literally in... The, the school of fish the, the school of little fish they were all around us they were everywhere and i got scared because i had always heard that if you're in a school of little fish it means that there's a big fish probably going to come and eat them and if it eats them you know what it could eat you i guess or hurt you or something anyway so i was so excited to tell our friend my friend who worked at the miami herald about our experience and then he had this curious grin like there was something he didn't tell us and there was something he didn't tell us and so i said what he said well what did you think of the beach itself i said well it was nice it was you know we, we were all by ourselves there was nobody there except for this lady he said well did you see any naked people and i said no we didn't see any naked people he said it was a nude beach he sent us to a nude beach on purpose just to get it you know just to prank us i guess but it it flopped the, the prank flopped because i guess because it had been raining and nobody was at the beach i don't think you can have a nude beach if there's nobody to be nude <laughs> anyway that was kind of a fun fun event i'll tell you something else i went snorkeling with my son in the keys another time also and this this time it's, the story is not about the snorkeling, but it's about the mask. 
Oh, well, the only thing about the snorkeling was the conch shells, I'll tell you that. But I want to tell you about the mask, because my son wore and still wears prescription lenses. Well, maybe he doesn't. I think he had LASIK, what do you call it, LASIK eye surgery. So, uh, yeah. But he wore eyeglasses, and he couldn't see really clear without them. And this place that rented the, the masks... Um, uh, rented rented prescription masks, uh, not prescription, but you know, as to, to replicate the prescription. And so he tried a few of them on before we went in the water, and found one that did what his eyeglasses did. And uh, I thought, well, that's amazing. And so he could see underwater clearly. Isn't that cool? dry this now. Drawing underwater picture. Draw a shark underwater. And dry it. Yeah, let me turn off the camera because this is going to take a while. It's very wet and I'll be right back. Okay, the uh, drying is done. And let's get back to the to the shark. Okay, um, I just want to do a little bit of a wash, I think, on the shark itself. Let's see, all the stuff in the background that dried, I'm going to have to move it around anyway, after it's, uh, I'm going to have to put another layer on it, of course. But I want to make sure I get that. I wanted to keep it very, very light anyway. And this is the beautiful thing about these watercolors. You can reactivate them and move them around. If you have stain color, it's called stain, by the way. I don't use stain, but I should use it one time just to demonstrate it. But stain is hard to move around once it's on the paper. It's not impossible, but it's, it's not as pliable, is that the word, as regular watercolor paints. All right, now what I want to do, since this color worked out so nice for the water, the shark is basically colored by the water itself. So I think the shark is really gray, I think. But the water is so, it has such an effect on his coloring or its coloring. I honestly don't know if it's male or female. This, that's something I don't know. But the coloring is very affected by by the light coming through the water. In this area, right around his eye here. And then over here, that's where, that's where I have to be very specific here. Pretty cool how the light works on the shark here. Just trying to make the dark areas dark first. a little bit too green I think I don't think that matters though to be honest with you I think it's but like I say it's the animal itself is gray so it's really the water that's coloring it <coughs> but I gotta be careful to make the shadows look realistic and
You ever go into a, a fish store, like where they sell fish to eat, and they have the whole fish sitting there in the ice? It's just so weird looking to see a whole animal. Maybe not for you. Maybe you grew up that way. I didn't grow up that way. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to him. Just a, just a little bit. Make it a little bit maybe darker. And I'm going to have to let that dry before I try to get the lighter colors. I think the water behind him, even though it's dry, I'm going to make the water darker. And I also want to create the look of maybe some rocks and stuff at the bottom here. So. Just keep messing with it. Let's try this here. A couple of different dark, a couple of different shades here. There's a big rock right there. Sure the, the surface of the water also has the, the bottom of the water really as far as painting it really doesn't look all that different than the top of the water you know the waves looking at them from the bottom they kind of have the same shape and everything as the top the only thing is they don't have is the, the, the white caps Now the shark is is uh, drying nicely, so I'll get back to him in a second. Right now I'm trying to create some rocks down here. Get all this colored in. Under the sea. Mm. What's that song from? The Little Mermaid? Everything's clear. Under the day, under the sea. There's some character to the bottom. It's not just plain blue and plain green, blue green, plain turquoise. Okay, I'm gonna have to get into his mouth there with a the little brush. 
pick up with a brush. That little skinny brush. Where is it? There it is. It's the magic brush. Let me get some of those deep, deep colors. Try it out here first. I gotta get those teeth so that they look like teeth. Definitely don't want water to creep into that area right there. feeling. It's a little bit too tight. Alright, get that nose. The nose is almost at a point right there. So I'm trying to, trying to create the look of rocks underneath him. I don't know if I'm doing it or not, but I have to make him very light compared to the water around him. Gives you the sense of a depth, a depth sense. There. That's a rock right there. Alright, I'll come back to that. I'll get this area. A little bit darker here. And uh, figure out a way to make that look like rocks later on. I might need to lift some of that paint up, but. Yes, this is a bit of a challenge, I will say. But I like taking challenges. I like challenging myself to a painting. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of darkness now to his side, just to increase the, the amount of darkness. Plus, i got to make sure I get these gills in there.
I guess I can go ahead and add a little spot for his eye. It's right about there. Yeah, that part, the, the, the shark basically has to be very, very light color, otherwise you're going to lose them in the, in the picture. And then, of course, the top part over here has to be light, too. I have to remember that. So, so what has to happen here, I think this is the key here. This color that is closest to the shark has to gradually become lighter as it goes to the top. And then light will be coming through the water's surface. then you know when the light comes through the water surface it creates this pattern of like spider webby looking light that hits everything so I'm going to try to recreate that look too so just a little by little try to get the, the background behind the shark to have that darker look to it, but not lose the green and the blue-green and the blue. Make sure I continue to get that in there, so this is what I'm trying to do now. Make sure I don't lose the blue and the blue-green. And it's got to be really dark. Tempted to, to paint bubbles in here too. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I think the key here too is to make the the shark's surface, the surface of the shark look dark. Look look dark but not be dark. Does that make sense? Look dark but not be dark. to mess up the the shark itself. Kinda of have to do that a little bit at a time. Get some of this light blue here now. Let's 
starting to happen, right? I'm starting to see it. Right now, let's get this light blue. Going all the way to the top. Let the water do its thing. Whoops. Right now, very quickly, it has to become very light because the light is coming through the surface up here. So we want to. Create that look. And then also create the look of, of light coming in from that surface. If that makes sense. underside of the waves now and again there's going to be a lot of light up there As they dry, I want to keep adding to them. I think under the shark has to be very dark. There's that's kind of a good look right there, actually, the way the water did that. a little time and eventually it starts to look like it.
but this is all really undefined. It's just all these, the, the way the underside of the waves look, it's very much a mixture of shapes and light and dark. Keep a lot of the little spots of light if I can. Little by little, little by little it happens, right? I can hear the birds outside. Okay, now I want to get a very, 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 very light wash. I'm going to use the back of the, the card to get that super, super light. I mean, it looks a little blue in there. Very, very light. Now let's take that. Let's take that and make the the shark give the shark some color but very little probably a good idea to keep some of that white in there Keeps wanting to come out. Just make that very, very super light.
See what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to blend it a little bit with the, the color that's being used for the shadow. Get that little hint of darkness right there. A little darker. Get those gills in there. Here we go. Now we're starting to get that look that we want. A couple of areas in the back here that could be darker. These don't even need to be defined. These could be coral or just like distant rocks or whatever. The only thing that really needs to be defined is the, is the shark itself.
Yeah, it always, always helps to have something that's vertical in the background. So that's what I'll do here. Some kind of a rock formation or something that he's swimming in front of. Plus it makes it easier to see the tail of the shark. Just like on a, a regular uh, landscape, things in the distance will be a little bit, a little bit blurry, not blurry, but a little bit uh, faded, like washed out a little bit. Same thing underwater. So I'll get some close things and some far things. just want to take one more go over with this this color that I left up here just bring it up here a little bit more
All right, I think that's it. I think that's our shark, our shark card. <laughs> that's not a baby shark. Baby shark, 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 baby shark, 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 shark. Here we go. Let me take a picture of it because I like to see what it looks like in the photograph. Helps me understand what it looks like. Yeah, it looks all right. What do you think? Right? All right, kids. Well, that was a challenge, and I hope you like the way it looks. I'll fold it when it dries. And um, thank you. Thank you for watching. And thank you for the little notes that you leave me. It's very sweet. I'll talk to you later. Bye.